So Bethesda just dropped a 45 minute gameplay showcase of Starfield and I have one major concern and that's about procedural generation. My concern is will procedural generation mean we're exploring barren wastelands or will the locations be tailor made and that's what we're going to look at in this video. I will be doing other videos about companions, space travel, spaceship building, base building and so on. There's so much to go over though so I'm going to be doing separate videos about each one. You can subscribe if you're interested in those other topics. For now let's take a look at how exploration and procedural generation is going to work in Starfield. In every one of our games, we always put so much care into all those little details that breathe life into our worlds. But Starfield isn't just a Bethesda Game Studios world, it's a Bethesda Game Studios galaxy. So why go this big with Starfield? Because we want to give you freedom on a galactic level. My most important takeaway from this is that it's going to be a Bethesda Game Studios world. Those handcrafted Bethesda experiences. So just how are they going to come into this game? We're about to find out. Scanning a planet before you land is a great way to get a sneak peek at the available resources you can use for crafting, building, and customizing. Now we'll talk more about crafting in a future video, but we can actually see some of the locations pinpointed on this planet. You can see there's two locations, as well as where all the crafting nodes actually are. And if you look on the left, you can actually see that there's water, aluminium, iron, chlorine, all these different materials that you can find on this planet, and even some discoverable traits. And it will also tell you when you've completely surveyed a planet 100% as well. I think what's cool about this whole system that we, we generate the planet itself as a procedural content, but the handcrafted content itself comes as the player explore. So this is one of the most interesting things to me in the whole presentation. The fact that these planets are indeed procedurally generated. And I was originally worried that these could be barren wastelands with nothing to see or really do on them. Some of the planets will be like that. But ones with locations on, he just said that even though the planet is procedurally generated, the structures and locations are handcrafted areas. And then what he says next is really interesting. Our system builds a planet as the player approaches it. We stitch together a block of terrain. After that, we have the system that adds interested locations for the player to explore, creatures to encounter, ore and plants to pick up. It allows us to add that touch of environmental storytelling that Bethesda is known for. So what's really impressive to me is that as we're coming towards these planets, these worlds, the planet itself is being generated by attaching these different tile sets together. And then when we're actually on the planet itself, it's adding these locations that we can then explore, the locations themselves being these handmade experiences. For example, this abandoned robotic facility is probably a location that someone has handmade. And then the procedural system essentially just puts it on a planet you happen to be exploring. But this could appear on any planet in the entire game. Just depends which one you explore first. So even if your friends were to visit the same planet that you had, you would have a different story to tell. That's mad. Desic Robotics Lab. So we're going into this location, which also has been placed there. Could have been an entirely different planet if like you or I play the game. We might have come across the same location in a different area which is, by the way, a nightmare for making video guides and tips and tricks on where to find the best unique weapons. It will just kind of be like, okay, there's a really cool unique weapon in this location, but then you just have to hope that the RNG mechanic of procedural generation generates that specific location on a planet you explore one day, and then you'll know that if you go there, you can get a unique weapon. Now, after we've completed this little location, it actually gives us the equivalent of what I think is a boss chest in Starfield. And this gives us our first legendary item, Incendiary Calibrated Deep Mining Space Helmet Legendary. And you can see all the different resistances it has, but it also has legendary effects on the armor piece. Technician, minus 15% damage from robot enemies. Hacker, plus two max auto attempts that can be banked while hacking. Incendiary, 10% chance to ignite nearby attackers. I mean, these are all really fun legendary effects to have on armor. And I think they've definitely developed this system to go onto weapons and armor. So it's cool that legendaries are in the game. So far, though, I haven't seen any unique weapons. Now, obviously, some of these locations that we're going to come across like the science outpost, are actually also going to have NPCs and characters living there and quests attached to them. 
Aggressive creatures have been disrupting our experiments. Their habitat isn't far from here. If you could take care of them for us, we would be in your debt. Now, obviously, this is the classic case quest of, hey, Preston, I'll mark this on your map. And then we go to the location, we kill 10 rats, and then we come back and the quest is finished. But the way it's kind of delivered looks interesting. I feel like I'm hoping that some of these locations don't just tell me to go to kill the local wildlife or whatever happens to be the, on the planet. It's a cool sort of side activity to do, makes the planet feel less lonely and more alive but i just hope that there's a bit more of that handcrafted quality to that and that's what we're going to be looking at next some random encounters and some tailored quests both of them are there and they talk a little bit more about them here some strangers might be looking for a little human connection in the darkness of space hello stranger i just finished cooking up some food if you want to come on over just pop on by Grandma. some of the best moments are the ones you discover on your own the thing I love most about Starfield is that it is a Bethesda game through and through. It's really about going to strange new places, meeting interesting people, and getting sidetracked on zany adventures. Then, realizing two hours later that you're involved in a completely new story. You're... Yes. Human. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. That DNA is so present here. It's in our random encounters, it's in our handcrafted quests. And it feels so cool to play it and just make your own path in this universe. There are over a thousand planets out there just waiting for you to visit. We want you to feel like explorers, breaking ground on new planets, exploring every inch of a mostly untouched galaxy. We want you to feel hopeful. We want you to feel this sense of awe and wonder, and sometimes a little fear. And right there we hear about the handmade tailored quests and also the random encounters we'll be experiencing as well. It makes the world feel like it's actually exciting to explore and an adventure. And the way he describes it definitely gets me excited to do just that. Bethesda also talks about all the handcrafted cities they make with quest lines and also several different factions, even mini factions that we haven't even heard of before. But again, I'll do another video on that. Instead, I want to loop back around to exploration and talk about what you can actually do to complete some of these 1,000 planets that are in the game. It's completely up to you how you want to interact with each planet, whether you want to explore and see what you can find, harvest resources and be on your way, or simply take in the views. Just such a unique range of procedural generation in different looking planets here, it is unreal to me. And that looked like a massive crashed spaceship to explore. Wow. With the help of your scanner, you'll chart the uncharted and discover exotic wildlife. I don't know if this is for everyone, but I quite- If you have the skills, you can even figure out that certain creatures and plants, you can build an outpost and produce resources from those plants and animals. You can get experience and rewards for fully surveying planets and fully surveying a whole system. I like that you can do it, but you don't have to. The game doesn't force when you we into this gameplay. concepting these creatures, we really wanted to think of them as natural to the environment. We didn't want alien monsters. We wanted native wildlife, something you've never seen before. Oh, I've never seen anything like half of these creatures. They're so weird. So as far as procedural generation in Starfield goes, I was actually really impressed by how they've combined procedural generation with still the handmade love and attention that goes into a good quality location with an interesting story behind it and mystery to discover. And I hope that they do nail both of those things. It seems like they've also gone to town with the cities and the big locations as well, but they're also trying something new. And I'm all for that. If you guys want to check out shipbuilding and crew members and traveling space next, I'll have a video on that next and I'll leave it just here. I'll see you there.